Hello, this is John from Vector Zero, and today we're going to be taking a look at camera movement inside of Roadrunner. Roadrunner allows you to edit large and small scale details of a 3D environment that can span many kilometers. The interactive camera controls allow you to navigate around in this large 3D space quickly and effectively. This tutorial will teach you the fundamentals of the camera controls. It is highly recommended that you familiarize yourself with the camera before moving on to other tutorials. Interactive control of the camera is possible at any time within any tool by pressing the Alt key and using the mouse. To get started, let's familiarize yourself with the camera. Um, we'll do so by opening a basic scene to move around in. To do this, go up to File, Open Scene, and select Sample 1. first thing we're going to talk about is rotating the camera around the point of interest. The camera control in Roadrunner is based on a polar camera model, where the camera essentially orbits around a point of interest at some fixed distance. To start, press and hold the Alt key, and left click and drag the mouse, and observe the change in camera rotation with respect to the point of interest. You'll notice that the point of interest remains at the center of the window at a fixed distance. In this case, this is the center of the scene. Next, we'll talk about moving the camera in and out from the point of interest. The distance that the camera orbits around the point of interest can be adjusted. If you are editing the position of a large freeway, you would want the camera distance to be large, maybe on the order of 100 meters, so you can move around a large area. If you are working on small scale details, such as a customized road sign, you would want to, the camera distance moved in close, maybe around 5 meters, and the point of interest to be centered on the sign. Zooming the camera in and out from the point of interest is done either by holding the Alt key and using the right mouse button, or alternatively, one can zoom in and out by using the mouse scroll wheel without requiring the Alt key. Again, press and hold the Alt key, right click and drag the mouse, and observe the change in the camera distance to the point of interest. Or scroll the mouse wheel up and down and observe the distance. Next, let's talk about how the camera distance affects rotation. Go through the following steps to familiarize yourself with how the camera distance affects the camera rotation. Press and hold the Alt key. Zoom the camera all the way in to zero distance by right-clicking and dragging the mouse right up to the camera stops moving. Great. It should feel similar to standing at a fixed location and turning your head around as you now orbit using the left mouse. Zoom out a few meters by right click and dragging a bit to the left until the camera moves a few meters back. Left click and drag the mouse to get a feel how the camera works when you are relatively close to an object. Zoom out all the way to the maximum distance. At this point, you can see your entire scene and left click and drag to feel how your camera works when you're zoomed all the way out. Great. Next, we're going to talk about how to move the camera, and how to move the point of interest. So far, we've kept the point of interest in the same place. By default, when you open a new scene, the point of interest is placed 1.5 meters above the origin to approximate the position of the head of a person standing at the center of your scene. Camera rotation and zooming are done relative to this point of interest. As most scenes are primarily organized in the XY plane, one usually wants to navigate around the scene by moving around in the XY directions. So I'm gonna zoom back in here. To do this, press and hold the Alt key, left and right click drag to change your point of interest. Alternatively, for those of you that use other 3D modeling programs, you may be familiar with using the middle mouse, press and hold the Alt key, use the middle mouse to accomplish the same thing. Next, we'll talk about how to move the camera point of interest up and down. For simple environments, one can often keep the camera point of interest height at the default and never change it. But for more complex environments with hills or more vertical features, it's necessary to move the point of interest up and down as well. First, rotate the camera to a relatively level orientation by pressing and holding the Alt key and left click and dragging until the horizon is near the center of view. Press and hold the Alt key and the Shift key this time, and then left and right click and drag to move the vertical position of the point of interest. You notice I can also pan in screen space as well. 
Alternatively, instead of pressing left and right mouse, you can use the middle mouse with Alt and Shift and get the same behavior. To quickly review, at this point, we've covered the basic camera movement controls. Here's a review of all the controls. To rotate, press and hold the Alt key and move with the left mouse. To zoom in and out, hold the Alt key and use right mouse, or alternatively, just use the scroll wheel. To move in the XY plane, press and hold the Alt key and either use both the left and right mouse buttons or the middle mouse button. And then to move up and down in screen space, use the Alt key and the Shift key combined with either left and right mouse or the middle mouse. Great. The second part of this tutorial covers framing the camera. This is the ability to frame or center the camera on an item in the scene. It's often convenient to frame the camera on a particular item, and most of the tools in Roadrunner allow you to work with some type of item, such as a road, a lane, prop, road marking, piece of terrain, but selecting a current item to work with can be tricky if you want to use what we've covered thus far. To select an item, left click on it, and this is going to be your new item of interest at any time. At any time, you can center the camera by going View, Frame Selected. In this case, I had selected a very long road, so it zoomed out all the way to view it. If instead I had selected this shorter road and clicked View, Frame Selected, it would zoom so that I can see this road. Alternatively, you can select something and press F to frame it. The next part of this tutorial is dealing with the view direction and projection of the camera. Roadrunner has options to quickly set the camera to north, south, east, west, or top-down view directions. This can be done with the view direction menus, which give these options here. For example, if I want to look at my scene top-down, I can use that hotkey. Alternatively, the numpad can be used to quickly go between these views. Top down is numpad 5, north is numpad 8, south is numpad 2, west is numpad 4, and east is numpad 6. Finally, as with many modeling programs, Roadrunner can switch between a perspective and orthographic camera. The Roadrunner camera um, usually is in a perspective mode. It's the normal viewing projection causing distant objects to appear smaller than close objects. The orthographic mode is similar to what you might find in a CAD tool. It's useful for precise positioning, usually from a top-down point of view. In orthographic mode, objects do not change apparent size as they get close or further away. The camera controls work the same in both modes. To switch to orthographic mode, because we're in perspective mode right now, either go to view, orthographic, Alternatively, you could press the O key. You can move and rotate and view the scene just as before, but you've noticed that our perspective has changed. To switch back to perspective, use view, perspective, or press the P key. Well, that covers the basics of camera movement, camera framing, and camera projection in Roadrunner. You're now set to go and use and view other tutorials. Thank you very much.